Morning, everybody. It's great to see a, a good, uh, good team here. We can have a lot of good interactive discussions this morning. So I come from this from a point of um, I come from this from a point of uh, background, industrial background, working for a traditional organisation like Tarmac, which I spent ten years at, a, uh, a an SME, volumetric SME, small one on the south coast called Roll Along, that I spent a couple of years at, and then a more advanced construction. Sadly, not there anymore. UMS, Unite Modular Solutions, which is based in Stroud. And, um, but my role today really is to talk, hopefully passionately, about what I want to see changed, but through the eyes and ears of the Construction Leadership Council. Um, I'm part of the Construction Leadership Council. I chair one of their subgroups, um, and uh, we are there on a mission. And I'm part of that mission, and so in, in part today is about me putting a call to you to respond. To you, your organisations, and also to organisations that you're working with in industry to respond to both Mark's report and to the wider, the, the wider agenda of the Con Construction Leadership Council. You know this probably already. Mark said a lot of this already this morning. Um, but the, the original uh, goals of the Construction Leadership Council were to respond to those four things. The Construction 2025 uh, uh, paper, um, which has been out a couple of years now, and, uh, but that's simpl put simply, lower costs, 33% lower costs. Everyone's thinking, how are we going to do that? There's inflation, but it's true, we've got to lower those costs, we can do that. Faster delivery, we've heard from Mark about how we can deliver some of that. Lower emissions, uh, lower carbon emissions, both embodied and in, during their operational stage. And the hard one, I believe, is improvement in exports. How do we export stuff from the UK related to construction products and materials uh, overseas? We're brilliant at our design skills. We're fantastic at our design skills. But how do we actually respond with, with our advanced mechanisms uh, uh, overseas? There are some brilliant countries that do this already, uh, Japan being the, the leader in this area. Um, just to walk you through this slide a bit more, Mark's talked brilliantly this morning about his report. Don't need to touch on that. Where the Construction Leadership Council has gone to is, is we've actually um, put together an innovation work stream team which is there to respond specifically to advanced forms of construction uh, and wider forms of construction and I'll move on to that a bit more. This is a really boring slide, excuse me, but I want you to understand the Construction Leadership Council, what it's there to do and how it does its job so you can get involved. That's why we need people involved to talk readily and highly about how things, are, how things are done. So the Construction Leadership Council, as Mark said, is led by Andrew Walthenstone and, uh, and, uh, and is split into a number of groups. Um, the groups are supply chain, exports, uh, smart technology, uh, innovation in buildings, sustainability, skills and strategy, all those things, pieces of the jigsaw, we need to tackle. My job is in the innovation in buildings area and I, I chair the uh, the creation of the business case and evidence base to make a change in this sector. I'm looking for that. Please come and talk to me. We need that evidence base to enable us to change. It has to be right, independent, knowledgeable and informative so we can use that to lead and tell others that this does work. So that's where our focus is on. You can see there there are other working groups, demand increase, uh, centres of excellence, who's going to be, who are going to be the organisations that get behind the skills and the training, uh, categorising risk and reducing risk to the industry or eliminating risk to the industry, changing the culture and the way that we work and defining and importantly defining those measures that we need to take that we can hold ourselves to in industry and say we are going to try to achieve these KPIs. Big KPIs, you saw the top level KPIs from government before on the 2025 strategy. So to the work group that I'm in, which is the innovation work stream focus, we've defined it as this. And that logo says it all to me. It's about productivity, it's about the capacity of, of, of the manufacturing and, and skills to deliver on that productivity. It's about the quality and performance we require going forward. Um, I, I, I touch on one of Mark's comments actually, I know there was an article last week about there's only one top 10 um, housing developer left in the country now, I think, private sector housing developer, with a five star rating. They've all lost it. Bar Barrett, I believe. Bar Barrett. What does that say about the quality of our sector here today about housing? 
Relative to this, so what is the innovation in building Workstream doing? It is, in, it is focused on embedding innovative construction techniques simply to improve that capacity and productivity in construction and enable quality and importantly do that over the, ho over the whole performance of those buildings. The whole performance, so that's construction, design, in use and indeed reuse or retrofit beyond that. So we need to consider it in that way. We have to consider it in that way. That's a difficult language for some people to understand, but we must actually consider it in that way. But we are focusing on homes. We will go beyond homes, but we are sim simply at this stage focusing on how can we deliver on this area, productivity, capacity, quality, performance in the housing sector, hence me being here today to talk to you. We have to start somewhere. And we've defined this as a new uh, mechanism, the commercialization of smart construction. So we've come up with a terminology which we're calling smart construction. Um, some of you may have heard of it. It's led in part from reports like KPMG, where they're focused on doing it better. Considering it as a business case, not as a product, not as a system, as a business case for change. So when we think about smart construction, it's not just off-site construction, it's everything. It's the business case, it's the technology, the digital aspect of linking everything together. It is, it is those industrialised manufacturing techniques, but it's also about the longer sustainability of the sector. How can we create something which will enable us to maintain and advance the industry like other sectors have already done? Light manufacturing has already done in the UK, heavily successful um, car uh, industry now we have in the UK. They did this because they took choices at some time. We're at that point now, and my call to you is that we must, must do that. So the Construction Leadership Council is focused on this. It's a ter terminology that we hope will take off. Smart construction, it doesn't just mean off-site. It means the whole sector thinking about the whole thing in, in its holistic case all the way through. If we focus on that product, the product only, we won't get that change. I'm convinced of that. I've seen it before. I've been through this before. We must consider the whole life cycle of the way we approach uh, uh, this construction sector, hence the terminology smart construction. Okay, so back last April, the Construction Leadership Council uh, held a significantly large, um, um, uh, significantly large workshop. Uh, we had 80 people from industry. Some of you might have indeed been there. Um, where we, we ran through what were the barriers and the things we have to do. Um, it was led by uh, Cambridge University, well there, and we came up with the following roadmap. A roadmap you can't see, but effectively these are a list of the barriers that we perceive to be in the case. Lack of collaboration, lack of demand. How can we encourage demand? Some of you in this room can help encourage demand. How can we invest? Big investment issues in the UK, particularly with construction. It's a very low invested sector. How can we take lessons from other sectors to heavily invest here? Our R&D is so small, one, two, three percent. How can we help investment through R&D, but also help invest in business case changes? Lending valuation and insurance about risk, immature supply chain, still working as it's always done. How do we connect it better and collaborate? Risk averse culture uh, in construction, heavily risk averse. No one wants to take that risk. People in this room have the potential to take that risk. Leap of faith, perhaps, we'd ask you to do that, you and your leaders. Um, procurement models, they have to change. This isn't just about creating a new product in a sector. It's about changing the procurement models. It's about changing everything in the way that your businesses work, private or public, to enable a significant change. I mentioned business case of change. This is the primary one for me. We, we, we must have the business case first. Without that, people won't believe in it, won't buy into it, and won't invest in it. Uh, we, we, we have to get economies of scale. Uh, Mark touched on the aspect of a given platform. The, the manufacturing sector set up platforms years ago. The construction sector still continues to set up individual off-site companies who have different standard detailing from each other. We need to try and standardise a mechanism to allow other organisations like private sector rental organisations and local authorities to be able to choose from different factories of a common platform. That's one of the reasons I hear all the time why people don't want to invest or take on off-site construction. They don't know which one to select. How do I choose? What do I actually do? How do I actually choose that? We need some commonality at a certain level to enable that to happen. Lack of performance data. BRE is heavily involved in that. 
between design and, uh, and actual performance data that's actually done. We're at a technological stage now where we can start to understand the performance data better than we've ever done before. We shouldn't forget that in homes people live in them and they are actually a level of d detecting performance data. They tell us the performance of those homes. And of course, and this has been heavily covered by Mark with skill shortage, significant numbers of things to, to tackle. Um, we've gone about it. This is a draft sheet. I don't expect you to read this. I don't expect you to read it. I just want to let you know the message that the, the, the Construction Leadership Council is focusing on certain metrics to be able to drive forward the sector. And we will be coming out publicly about those metrics to, 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 to enable industry to respond. And they broadly are metrics around MPV, pre uh, pre PMV, sorry, pre-manufactured value, the percentage of, uh, of construction carried out off-site effectively what is done in a factory environment. If we can focus on that better, we, can, we know through other sectors that we can, we, can, we can reduce costs from that. My experience at Unite tells me we did that. I know the prices of volumetric construction that we actually achieved 10 years ago. They were significantly lower than, than on site. Focus on productivity, focus on waste, an aspect of measurement on quality, the inverse of defects. The housing sector is terrible. We talk about defects. Let's talk more about quality. It's the inverse measurement, but let's talk more about quality and make it a positive attribute rather than a negative attribute. Um, procurement, safety has come up heavily. We're going to focus on safety. Safety is linked to productivity. Unsafe working sites create less productive sites and less, uh, less um, profit for industry. So all these things we've collectively looked at as a group so far. This is a draft. It hasn't gone out yet. But the, we'll, what will come from this are certain measurements we're expecting the industry to respond to. We hope the industry to respond to. We will help them, don't get me wrong, but we, 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 we expect the industry to actually respond to. Okay, so I'm nearly there. I'm nearly finished. The top level is the measures. We've talked about those. Create those measurements which really deliver, help industry focus and deliver on. Um, the working groups are categorised like this, barriers and actions. Business case, I'm focusing on that as part of the, the, the work stream. How do we create the right business cases for change? Demonstrate those benefits. Um, and we're doing that through working with organizations like yours, looking for those changes. Um, lack of demand, there's a group run by uh, Langer Rourke's Adam, Adam Locke, um, who's heavily involved in off-site construction. How does he help create demand in the sector? Again, we can be involved in this room. Um, investment significantly need to give more confidence to the sector so we can attract more investment, more R&D investment, more uh, investment in changing things uh, to, to come through. Barriers on the supply side, lack of collaboration, always comes up, keeps coming up. How do we bring supply chains together to start to work together better? How do we bring that together? And we've decided we'll do that through bringing uh, centres of excellence together and not creating a new entity. We use the existing infrastructure that we've got in the UK, fantastic knowledge infrastructure we have in the UK, colleges, universities, people like BRE, of course, other organisations. How can we bring them together as one piece using the best of their skills to enable that collaboration to happen? It won't happen because of centres of excellence or happen because we teach and, t and, d d and describe things in the right way and change things. And the last one on the supply side is the risk averseness. How do we knock that down? How do we help lenders to, be, to want to come forward? How do we help insurers to change things? How do we actually go about doing that? There's a working group focusing on that, and that's now being run by uh, Build Offsite, and being focused on and chaired by Build Offsite's new chairman. So we're really focusing on that. We need your help. We need your evidence to actually achieve this. My last slide is very simple. It's just a quick one to say how BRE is responding to some of these challenges. Um, BRE primarily certifies things, buildings, products. We test and measure things. We do great research and we do great advisory. Um, we're a knowledge-based organization, so we want to project that back out. So I've very simply put some of our logos up here. Uh, Gwyn will be talking soon about the home quality mark and how that links to different things. We have Bri Briam here. All of our products are focused on quality, performance, uh, and the release of the new modular standard BPS 7014 uh, due soon, um, coming from the AMSKI project, which is led by Lango Rourke. They will come soon. They will have an impact on, on the sector around quality and performance. Um, further down, I've just touched on things that maybe you don't know about. We've launched a new website called SiteSmart. That's about collecting real quality construction data 
performance, quality, process efficiency at a granular level, not at a financial level, a granular level, using digital tools and apps to collect data on site so we can really start to piece together granular into the overarching macro aspect of construction. Big heavy uh, uh, um, link to that really. Um, we will create a data hub here to allow organizations like yours to see our data so we can start to create KPIs around the sector. You can then download this data and look at different forms of construction, work out which one performs better. That's where we're going. We're a bit behind the curve there, but we're moving things forward. This has all come from our great research and advice. The Yamsky project with Lango Rourke, where we're developing the VPS 7014 standard. Um, AMCH, which I've been involved in personally with Barrett, Chris Nicholson, uh, Stuart Milne Group, which is how do we industrialize off-site construction? Again, a business case approach. And recently, we've, we've, we've helped persuade Chris Nicholson as BRE um, to, to move over to completely to modular construction. They're making that commitment in the next 10 years to move wholly owned over to off-site construction. That's a major thing. I, 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 in some ways, I can't understand why that's not come out more in, in press. But to get a top 10 private sector developer to move over to modular construction is a massive leap of faith. And, we, and, and that's a great result for the sector and, and for the work that we're doing and other people are doing. And lastly, the BRE Academy, will, who will help to work with the centres of excellence to actually push this out. So thank you for listening. Please come and speak to me about how you can help with the Construction Leadership Council. Thank you.